Good morning, good day, good evening. My name is Diane Kovats, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the International Society for Computational Biology. It's my absolute honor to welcome you today to the ISCB Town Hall meeting, a state of our society. I'm joined with many of the ISCB leadership and I'll be acting as your master of ceremonies. For today's agenda, Christine Arango, ISCB president, will give a brief address, followed by a presentation of awards, our introduction of our class of 2021 fellows, and then Bruno Guieta, our treasurer, will do our treasury and membership report for you. Kath Brooksbank, a co-chair of the ISCB Education Committee, will share some of our ISCB education and training initiatives that we're working on and have been implementing. And then Alex Bateman will share our exciting news about our green ISCB initiatives. Followed by that, Thomas Lingauer will join Alex and announce our new Bioinformatics Advances Journal. Finally, Michelle Brazos will talk about our elections, and then we'll turn our program over to our energetic student council, who will get deep, give us a deep dive into what the student council is doing, as well as present the SCS 2021 awards. So with that, Christine, I'm going to go ahead and share the screen over to you. Welcome. Thank you, Diane. I'll just share my, uh, my slides. Hopefully you can all see that. Well, it's a, a great pleasure to open this meeting and it's, it's an honor to be your new president. And I think my first task as the new president is to thank the people who are stepping down this year. Firstly, huge thanks to Thomas Lengauer, who's been our president and has steered us so skillfully through through many challenges, not least COVID, but also through many successes. And in particular, I'd like to mention the, the launch of the Bioinformatics Advances Journal, which you'll hear more about later today. But I, I also think the establishment of the Equity, uh, Diversity and Inclusion, the EDI Committee, has also been important as it will help us to make the society more fair. Thanks also to Bonnie Berger, who's been a wonderful vice president uh, always contributing many valuable and exciting ideas to the executive committee. She's also been the chair of the fellows committee and the chair of the awards committee. Scott Markle, who's done an amazing job for very many years as the secretary of the society. I, it's, uh, it's, it's hard not to see him on the, on the meetings anymore. He's always been the voice of calm and reason, reminding us of what the regulations are and what the mission of our society is. Thanks so much, Scott. Um, thanks also to our board members, Francisco Mela Lederman, Nikki Mulder, and Peja Radivojak, all stepping down this year, um, and all of whom have made great contributions to the board. Um, Francisco has also been a co chair of the conferences committee, and Nikki Mulder was uh, a co chair on the nominations committee, and Peja Radivojak has been the chair of the publications committee and um, has been involved in the launch of bioinformatics. Advances Journal. So thanks to all of you, and we hope to see you uh, again in, in, in other capacities in the society, but thanks so very much for, for what you've given over the years. So I, I want to just briefly run through some of the things that we've, uh, we've achieved over the last year, and in particular, thanks to the conference committees and the Cozy Track organizers for all the work they've done in handling our Zoom conferences. Of course, Zoom is a wonderful mechanism to reach out more widely across the world. And we've had many more participants as a result, both last year and this year, even though obviously I think there's some Zoom fatigue setting in, we still have a really good turnout. We also have more countries involved, 25% increase over 2019. And I'd like to stop at this point and especially thank um, Belle and Seth for the huge amount of work they've done. Seth is the technical lead and setting up all the poster viewing halls. And Belle, who's done great work with the scientific program committees and introduced lots of very uh, good ways of engaging via Zoom. And we've also had a lot of uh, successful virtual conferences uh, in other continents, um, hosted by Africa, Latin America, and also hosted by the student regional groups. And you'll hear more about those from the our very dyna dynamic student groups later on. And in the future, we hope to be able to offer these hybrid meetings because it brings more participation and you can choose whether you come in person or you attend by Zoom. Um, sorry. Uh, okay, so the next, I think, big development we've had, as I've mentioned already, is the bioinformatics advances. You'll hear more about that from, from Thomas later on. 
Um, and I want to thank in particular Alfonso Valencia, Thomas Lengau, and Peja Radivojak, and the Publications Committee for the huge amount of work that's gone into this over the years. And it's a really significant development, as I've mentioned already. And thanks to Thomas and Alex for taking the helm with this journal and bringing in a really great diverse team of editors. I want to thank the organizers of the communities of special interest. We have 21 of those now, and we're hoping to keep those communities active throughout the year by the webinar series we've launched. They, each community, each COSY will do two, two webinars per year. And that means that we'll have webinars more or less every week throughout the year. Um, and all of these will be part of ISCB Academy. Education, always very active as ever. Um, and you'll hear more about that later. I particularly want to mention the, uh, the launch of the short course affiliation program, the degree endorsement program. And again, they're going to launch an ISCB Academy webinar series as well. And they've really done great work in the Global Education Summit. I want to thank the Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Committee for great work on their survey of the ISCB awards. And uh, although we can see that we, we awards in reasonably fairly according to gender, so the ratios are close to what we have in the society, we can see that in other areas of diversity, we're not so good. And we can also see that as far as nominations go, that there really is a problem and we need your help with that. We need you to be nominating a much wider uh, group of nominees um, that really capture the diversity we have in our society. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm having problems with this. It's not, that's it. Uh, there we go. Um, and I also want to thank the people who are involved in the review of the ISCB fellows process. This will be discussed and hopefully brought in for next year. And thanks to Seth for his help with this. Um, again, just briefly on this ISCB Academy webinar program, big thanks again to Bell and Seth for running that. And it's really gaining momentum. It's only been going for 18 months. We already have 27 recordings in the library. And as I said, from September, we're going to have cozy webinars every Tuesday. And we do have this training and industry series being planned as well. And it will be available for you on ISCB TV. Um, we're also launching, as regards communicating with the other societies and wider public, we, the Public Affairs and Policy Committee have launched a new Science in Society webinar series. And Thomas Lengar will moderate the first one of those this Tuesday on scientific journalism. I hope you catch that at some time. Um, what a few ideas for the future, but really we would like all your ideas and your input. We really need to increase the perception of our society to increase our membership and keep it stable. And this means increasing the recognition of our cozies. It means increasing the prestige of our awards and fellows by making the, more, the whole process more transparent. How can, we, how can we enhance and expand our cozy activities? What are we missing? Can you let us know if there's something, some area that we should be planning? Should we think about synergies with other societies, for example, experimental or engineering, um, especially with this link between big data and computer science? Should we help our cozies expand their organizational structure? Uh, they, they work incredibly hard and it's a lot of work organizing the tracks in ISMB. We're now asking them to help with, our, with their cozy webinars and the student council have already been helping quite a lot with that and postdocs as well. So any ideas on how we can do more to keep these communities active throughout the year would be great. We want our cozy webinars to be a, really a must have on everyone's CV and to be as valuable as giving a talk at our ISMB conference. We also want to encourage synergies, joint meetings and joint special sessions where we can see there are areas of overlap between our cozies and, and they do exist. Um, we really want to be more fair. This is incredibly important. And we, we again, thanks to the EDI committee, we need to make sure we have the right initiatives in place to continuously monitor our diversity and publicize it. We need to work with the cozies more so we can capture information on, on who's speaking and on, the, on their talk in their tracks. We need to solicit nominations from them. But as I said, we also need to solicit nominations from all of you as well. Training, it's difficult, to, there's so much going on in training, it's difficult to know what, what to suggest. But obviously there are already plans to work with other communities, experimental and engineering, and also capture, there's a lot of online material being generated as a, rel as a result of um, COVID. And so hopefully we can capture some of that and facilitate the dissemination of that. And we can help in training more experts in these uh, transformative technologies of AI and machine learning. Um, we need to continuously think about how we can be more global and nourish our regional communities. 
uh, and our, our regional student meetings, perhaps by selecting the best talks for a track at ISMB, working closely with our regional groups through jointly hosted meetings, um, and re relaunching perhaps if we can financially, our affiliated group incentive program. But I think probably what's going to become increasingly important over the years, we, we need to help the society and the, all of you who belong to it to become more green. And um, you'll hear more about that from Alex Bateman. We have another track this year at ISMB and we need help in growing our ISCB Grove. Alex will tell you more about that. How will our hybrid meetings help with our carbon footprint? And should we be encouraging people to perhaps uh, join meetings when they're in a country near them? Um, so many things to think about. And so really it's your society. So I want to end by saying that we need you as well. We need you to volunteer for our committees, to come to our conferences and workshops, to submit your papers to our new journal and to give a talk in or to listen to our webinars. But most importantly, please give us feedback. What should we be doing more of or less of? And oh, after that, I want to thank Diane and her whole team uh, for keeping the show on the road so successfully and professionally, and also Stephen Laird and his team for helping with this conference. But um, thanks very much to Diane for, for, for making uh, the society move so uh, smoothly. And I'll stop at that point, Diane, and stop sharing my screen. Very kind of you, Christine. It's an absolute pleasure to have the opportunity to, share, to serve the society on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm not gonna quite let you off the hook because you have the honor of presenting our 2021 Wikipedia competition uh, results and awards. The ISCB started this competition 10 years ago this year. And over the course of the fall and winter time period, we solicit articles through Wikipedia that can be improved. Um, we have three prizes. Third place will get $150 in a year subscription to ISCB. Second place gets $250 in a year subscription. And our top Wikipedia prize winner will get $500 US dollars in a year subscription. Are you ready, Madam President? I'm ready. <laughs> Let's see who's been successful. So third place tie for our Wikipedia comp competition is Wyatt Smith and Uza Zauseris. I hope I've pronounced that correctly from the University of Ohio in America, out of bag error. So that sounds fascinating and congratulations on that. The uh, second person on the third place tie is the group from Sinvestav National Autonomous University of Mexico and the University Mijo Ajana de San Nicolas de Hidalgo, Mexico. Apologies for mis any mispronunciation there. And again, fascinating topic, machine learning in bioinformatics. Congratulations there. Our second place goes to Tiago Lubiana, the University of Sao Paulo on biocuration. Very important topic, well done. And our first place goes to Nelly Selem Moyica and Erika Cruz at Sinvestav, Mexico. Again, Fascinating topic, pan genome, and really congratulations for the first place in our Wikipedia competition. Now on to the introduction of the class of 2021 fellows. Madam President. So it really gives me great pleasure to introduce a new class of fellows and many, many of them will be familiar to you already. Um, so at, oh, Sally, let's stop there, do I, Diane? I wasn't sure if I was supposed to. Sorry, keep... sorry. I, I, I don't know if there's time to give the names. Of course, everybody can see the names. So perhaps you can advise me on that, whether I should call out the names or not. Uh, please feel free to, to do so, Christine. Okay, very briefly then, because it's a congratulations and welcome to the fellows for this group. Atal Bute, Keith Dunker, Eran Hel Halperin, Wolfgang Huber, Soren Istrea, Christina Leslie, Ming Li, Nuria Lopez Spigas, John Malt, Dana Pierre, Teresa Pristika, Aitan Rupin, and Gustavo Stolitsky. I hope I pronounced them all correctly. I will give the resounding applause. Thanks, Diane. Thank you so much, Christine. At this time, I'd like to turn the floor over to the ISCB tre treasurer, Bruno Gieta, to give the treasurer's report. Bruno? Thank you. Um, I should have unmuted and 
turn my video on, so hopefully I'm visible. Um, we can see you perfectly fine, Bruno. Excellent. So, um, in case you haven't noticed, we've had a pandemic and it's still going on, and it has had a big effect on our finances. Uh, but all through uh, the, the pandemic and going on, our goal has been to keep the society running, to keep all our programs, to make sure that we can continue um, serving our mission and serving our members. So over the last year, we, in spite of uh, a considerable financial hit, we have not reduced or cut any supportive program. Um, all our conferences have moved to virtual platforms. Um, last year's ISMB was um, by the skin of our teeth. This year, hopefully, we will find it a lot smoother and, and organized. We've also introduced a new program, ISCB Academy, um, that will be discussed uh, later. And we've continued to support uh, those in need through our fellowship program. Uh, especially students' uh, fellowships and so on. And the reason why we've been able to do all this, um, in spite of our income dropping through the floor, is because we had good reserves. And in past years, whenever I gave the treasurer a talk, somebody in the audience would question, why do you, have, why do you keep this re these reserves? Well, this is what it's for. This has allowed us to, uh, to weather this, uh, this pandemic and hopefully weather it until uh, things pick up again. Next slide, please. So in terms of membership, our membership took a major hit. Um, we reached uh, our all-time high in 2019 after the, the Basel conference, which was widely successful. We had almost 3,500 members. Um, six months later, um, well, sorry, end of last year, it dropped to 2,686. And that's partly because people just did not rejoin for a, a virtual ISMB. Uh, that being said, our membership is starting to rebound and we're really happy to see that. And it's currently at um, a little bit over 3,211. Now, membership is important. You know, there is the society is there for the members, but the members also support the society. And more, the more members we have, the more programs we can offer to these members. And in order to, uh, to increase memberships and to make the society always more relevant and also more affordable, um, we've introduced two new membership models. One of them is a laboratory membership. The other one is an institutional membership. And these are group memberships. Um, that allow getting uh, a whole bunch of people to join the society uh, in one go with um, some, um, some discounts. Um, and if you go and look on the website, you will see the details. Next slide, please. So this is showing again the, uh, the evolution of our membership over the years. You can see that 2019 was our best year uh, ever, but you saw the drop in 2020 from the high to the low. And now in 2021, um, we are picking up again to some extent. Can I have the next slide? Thank you. This is showing the breakdown of the membership uh, by country. Um, one big contributor to the drop of membership last year was a big drop in European membership. But this year, and I suspect partly because um, the time zone of ISMB is more Europe friendly and also it's joined with ECCB. Um, we are seeing a European membership picking up again, but also other countries, which is great. Next slide, please. So getting onto the numbers, uh, you can see that um, in 2020, we lost money. We lost almost $200,000, whereas in 2019, we were in profit. Um, our revenue was considerably down, but our expenses uh, were reined, it, reined in uh, considerably as well, um, thanks to, uh, to the really hard work of, of the BACB staff and I. 
Um, that being said, at the same time, uh, our investments picked up. This is nothing to do with us. It's got everything to do with the market, which surprisingly went up during the pandemic. Um, but you can see the breakdown of the expenses. Um, we have kept um, really the only thing that went down significantly was conferences, and it's because they moved um, to a virtual uh, model. Can we have the next slide, please? So in closing, um, our strong cash flow and uh, our excellent financial position in 2019 has kept us alive um, till today as we continue to navigate the, the pandemic. And hopefully that won't last too much longer and we'll be able to, to pick up again. We always try to operate the society to break even, um, and especially at the moment. And we hope to make some money to support new activities in the future, um, and also to recover the, the deficits that we incurred in the last two years. The biggest problem is the declining membership because it will put a strain on the finances. Um, so we need to, uh, to keep on to try to, un to, uh, to increase the membership. And um, this is really something for all of you who are here in attendance today because you are the faithful ASB members. Um, and the fact that you are interested in, in the runnings of the society uh, means that you have a, a stake in it and you see the value of it. Um, and any help you can give us here to, to increase membership um, and to talk to your colleagues who would also get benefit from it, please do so. Uh, moving on, it's clear that face-to-face um, -face conferences are go never going to be um, the same. And we are going to be, to be offering future conferences hopefully as hybrid face-to-face -face for those um, who can and uh, enjoy the, um, the benefits that the face-to-face -face networking offers, but for others uh, in virtual format as well, so that the science can be spread as far as possible. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Bruno. Next, I'd like to turn the discussion over to Kath. Kath Brooksbank, one of the ISCB Education Committee co-chairs. Kath? Thank you very much, Diane. Um, before I uh, launch into a, a, an update of what we've been up to in the last year, I, I would also like to say a, a, a few thank yous. As Christine mentioned, it's been another very busy year. Um, and I'd like to say uh, a thanks to Nikki Mulder and Venkata Sat Satagopam, my two co-chairs on the Education Committee. I'd like to say thank you to our cosy leads, Russell Schwartz and Patricia Palaggi. I'd like to say a special thank you to Bruno Gaeta, who is perpetually active in our education activities and whose wisdom and experience we continue to call on. And of course, to Diane and the ISCB team who are quite simply awesome. There is no other word for it. So it's been a very busy year. You'll learn more at the education cozy session later on if, if, if that's the track you choose to follow. Uh, and I'm gonna give you a very brief update. Since 2014, the ISCB has been refining and advancing its um, standard for bioinformatics curricula through the competency framework. And the committee, together with a broad network of bioinformatics educators, has updated this standard in the past year and has written guidelines to support course providers to apply the standard. This standard is reviewed on an annual basis during the Global Bioinformatics Education Summit, which has now been going for three years, and then updates and revisions are released in associated publications and on the website. Um, we believe that excellence in our profession starts with a deep knowledge foundation and this standard is our attempt to support that and to enable educators around the world to, to, to um, continually improve their bioinformatics education and training offerings in, in line with what the ISCB 
understands to be the very state of the art in computational biology and bioinformatics. And, and to that tune, we are soft launching two um, uh, programs that, that, that support these activities. Uh, the first of these is the ISCB affiliated short courses program. Um, this program gives those producing short courses the opportunity to have them affiliated with the ISCB. Affiliation includes a branding of the ISCB logo and promotion of the short course in the events calendar. Short courses can be affiliated if they demonstrate that they support the development of one of the competency areas in the ISCB competency framework. And if you'd like to submit an application, please contact us via education at iscb.org or reach out through the conference attendee connections and we'll um, endeavour to support you through your application process. Um, for longer and degree granting programmes, we have a degree granting endorsement programme, which is also soft launching at this conference. The, um, uh, the offer there is um, peer review of your entire de degree programme and uh, a checking that that programme also meets the, the competency standards set by, by the competency framework and details about the programme, what is required, the benefits of being endorsed by ISCB will be made available online soon. You can also reach out to us, as, as, uh, as I mentioned before, for the affiliation programme, um, should you like to participate in that endorsement um, activity. We've been very active in terms of offering and then um, capturing uh, tutorials and workshops at ISCB conferences. So it's a goal of, of the committee to provide training and workshops worldwide. We offer these as part of our official ISCB conferences, and it's a great way for um, members of the society to get involved in education and training activities. We um, open calls for submissions throughout the year, and if you have a training um, activity or a workshop that you'd like us to consider, please do submit to these conferences. We're beginning now to expand this programme to offer training throughout the year via the ISCB Academy, and we'll be sharing more information about that in the coming weeks. Um, moving on from that, we've then, um, we, we've then gathered all of the, the tutorials and workshops that have been delivered over the past years into a single resource page of on-demand tutorials. Um, videos are tagged by topic and they're available to view on ISCB TV. As more new trainings become available as they're delivered at conferences and through the ISCB Academy, we'll add them to this page so they'll be a single source of all previous tutorial material that will be there for you to make use of. If you have a recorded training that you'd like to have included, um, please do get in touch um, and uh, you can email admin at iscb.org to have your content added. Um, we're a very active and also a very open community at the ISCB and we collaborate um, with the Education Cozy and with Goblet, the Global Organization of Bioinformatics Learning, Education and Training. Um, we, we've worked closely with Goblet over the, over the past year to fulfill our strategic education and training initiatives. Um, the, the, the COSI and the committee work especially closely together. The difference between these two groups is that the committee is made up of ISCB members, and this is a requirement of the bylaws of the society, but the COSI is open to all. Um, members and non-members alike who have an interest in bioinformatics training and education development. I highly encourage you to enjoy it, to consider joining the Education Cozy. There's a huge network of people who are absolutely passionate about education and training within our profession. And if you're not already a member of the society, and if you are a member of the society and haven't interacted with the Cozy yet, then I would warmly encourage you to do so. Goblet now also offers individual membership if you're interested in getting involved there. Previously, it, it, it only offered um, societal or, or, uh, or membership to um, a legal entity, but you can join as an individual now. 
And then finally, we have our, our education website, which is managed by the ISCB Education Committee. It's filled with resources. Um, you'll find information about the degree programmes, ar archived tutorials, um, committee supported competitions and many other things. Um, it's grown somewhat organically over the years and we're about to undergo a major overhaul to make the site more intuitive and user friendly. So watch this space for updates over the coming year and of course we'd be delighted to have your input. And with that I'd like to thank you for your attention and I will hand back to Diane. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Kath. So many great things coming out of our education committee, committee education cozy and the collaboration with Goblet. I would now like to bring to the to the virtual stage Alex Bateman, the chair of the ISCB Green ISCB Task Force. Alex. Okay, so um, I'm going to give a quick update from the Green ISCB Committee, um, which meets regularly to discuss sustainability issues for ISCB. Um, and I'd like to thank the other committee members, Diane Kobatz, Burkhart Rost, Christine Arengo, Janet Kelso, Shell Brazos, and Jeff Barton. And uh, so one of the, the things that we have done is to introduce the ISCB Grow program, uh, which allows uh, our members to offset their um, carbon emissions. And um, so I'd encourage you to go and visit the site and um, do this to offset your, probably you don't have many emissions from travel at the moment, but maybe you might look at uh, offsetting your historical um, emissions. But having this conference virtually for the last two years has actually saved uh, an enormous amount of carbon emissions, probably between 750 and 1000 tonnes of CO2 emissions per year saved. So we're really pleased um, that the society um, is looking very strongly into how to run future meetings in a hybrid format so that you can, if it's relatively local to you, attend in person. And if it's a very long haul flight away, maybe uh, you, you might not attend in person, but attend remotely. Um, additionally, we've held at the last two ISMB conferences, sustainable, sustainable computing uh, special sessions. And, and we had the uh, this year's yesterday where there were great talks on um, the, globe, the impact of uh, AI and also on the global impact of um, computing technology. So some really great talks and also uh, presentations from Loic Lanlong on software that you can use to sort of measure your uh, compute uh, emissions. Um, and coming out of the discussions of that committee, there's also a 10 simple rules article which should come out in PLOS computational biology quite soon. So uh, that's a sort of very quick update. If you're interested in getting more involved, then please do contact us. We'd be really interested to hear your thoughts and, and, and get you more involved. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. I actually had the opportunity of popping into the green session yesterday with some really exciting information. For those of you who did miss the green session who are interested in learning more, um, those sessions will be posted a bit later today because it was our live stream session the live stream talks do take a little bit of time to process before they're part of the library, that any of the sessions that are presented here at ISMB will be part of the conference library for your, your viewing much after. But with that, I'd like to now invite Thomas Lingauer also to share his screen and with along with Alex, tell us a little bit more about bioinformatics advances. All right, do you see my screen? I sure do, Thomas. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to tell you a little bit about bioinformatics advances and Alex, uh, the other editor in chief will pick up during this short presentation. So after a good 25 years of the life of our society, we finally have our society journal. Um, since March of this year, um, we uh, um, opened this journal. Uh, we do this together with one of the leading publishers, uh, scientific publishers in the world, Oxford University Press. We're very happy and I'm personally proud to uh, join with them. Um, the partnership with them is uh, extremely productive and enjoyable. Um, this is a, an online journal, online only. It represents all signs of our society plus emerging areas. So we will have scientific content. We will also have uh, society content. 
Um, there is gonna be technically one issue per year, but papers will be continually published on the journal website. Um, we had a soft launch on March 24th. That was when the submission uh, website went live, um, but wasn't announced very uh, broadly yet because we were in test mode. Uh, we also have a transfer mechanism that Alex is going to tell you a little bit more about in a couple of minutes from uh, OUP Bioinformatics. And we also had a transfer mechanism from ISCB, uh, that should be ISMB, uh, ISMB ECCB 2021 this year. And I expect that we're going to have this every year. Um, then we had the content launch on May 12th. Uh, that was when we announced uh, submissions, uh, uh, invited submissions, original submissions. Uh, and when the first content appeared, there was no scientific content yet because paper processing takes time, it was a launch editorial by the two of us and an accompanying letter of the ISCB president. As of today, we have nine advanced articles on the website, plus five more articles accepted. We have more than, than 70 articles uh, that have been submitted or transferred and that have been processed or are still in process. Um, this is our editorial team. We're very happy and uh, proud to have them. They're excellent. There are eight people. I will not read them. Uh, you can look at them uh, on our journal website. And um, they are doing hard work for the journal. And we expect to increase uh, this board uh, incrementally as the journal paper volume picks up. Um, we have pretty good coverage topically already now. <clears throat> the journal is considered, we consider the journal a sister journal to OUP Bioinformatics. Um, the sister quality is um, manifested by the transfer mechanism that uh, um, Alex will tell you about, but also by a, a scope, related scope. We will have a broader scope than bioinformatics. You see the subject categories on the left of this slide and the, the top half which is in Roman uh, font, is exactly the subject categories of bioinformatics. We basically inherited those subject categories. Bioinformatics is a very methodical journal. It is not really um, catering to application studies, which is what we will do. So we have uh, about a dozen more subject categories that um, cater to applications. Um, and we reach out to the community to, um, um, to populate those subject categories. On the right, you see the paper types. We also have a few more paper types than OUP Bioinformatics does. There is a discovery note. These are again in italic, the original ones for our journal. There is a scientific data article, which is basically like a, an application's note, but it's not putting forth a method. It's putting forth a data, data set or data repository uh, together with access functionality. And then we want to have opinion articles, perspective articles. Those are articles which we hope our society members will um, populate. And we are currently looking for original content there, solicited original content. Um, uh, and we're going through the society through the COSIs in order to populate this. And there are feature articles, which are, it's a broad category that we still have to contour uh, about uh, society, scientific society content. Um, it's an open access journal. So there are open access charges. You see these charges here. They're somewhat lower than the charges of um, competing journals in the field. And as an ISCB member, you get a 20% discount. Um, on the uh, license fee. I will not read those. You see those uh, access uh, charges also on the, on the uh, journal website. So here are our priorities for running the journal. We want to secure high quality and broad topical coverage of submissions. Uh, I mentioned that before. We want to keep a coherent scope, mostly reflecting the scope of ISCB, but we also want to reach out to emerging fields. There is a little bit of a trade-off between scope coherence and broadness, which is a you know, balance that we will actively pursue. 
Uh, we want to reach out to the global research community and meet diversity goals. Um, you've already heard from our president that diversity is a high priority in our society, and we want to go along the line of increased diversity, increased fairness, and we take this up uh, in our journal also, as you may also see when you look at our editorial board. Um, we want to cater to our authors. We want to be very personal and professional and timely. Uh, and we already get the first uh, very positive feedbacks from our authors about they feel pretty happy being served by us. Uh, there is also going to be special issues that uh, we uh, can uh, have in the journal. For instance, uh, coming from the COSIs or coming from conferences in the field. There is a first conference with, with, with which we will team up over the summer. And uh, of course, we want to build a high reputation of the journal and we hope that you find the journal attractive and that you will submit to it. Now I hand over to Alex for the uh, remaining slides. Thanks, Thomas. So one of the, the key aspects of this uh, new journal is that we have a, a mechanism to transfer papers from OUP Bioinformatics to our journal. And these transfers uh, are a really important method to grow the journal in the early years. And this mechanism, it reduces the re-review of papers because we can reuse the reviews that came from bioinformatics. And the editors there at bioinformatics are, are, are selecting papers that they think are very good quality, but perhaps are not within scope of the journal or don't meet their very high impact criteria. And so, we've been very happy with the quality of the papers that's coming along and being able to make very fast dis first decisions on these papers. So this process is working well. Next slide, please. We uh, are seeing about three submissions a week at the moment. And so we're estimating about 150 submissions by the end of our first year. The acceptance rate, actually there are large error bars here. So it's anywhere between about 40 and 70%. I think this estimate's a bit on the high side. So we'll probably see about 70 papers published in the first year, which is about double the uh, initial estimates put together by Oxford University Press. And also we're seeing very good uptake of the, the transfer option. But I'd really like to encourage you all to uh, submit your papers uh, to Bioinformatics Advances. I think uh, you'll have a, a, a great experience with us. Next slide, please. And uh, just some uh, the next step. So we have an agreement with the INCOB uh, conference for 2021 that will accept papers from uh, that conference. Um, we are also about to uh, invite our inaugural set of uh, 12 members for the editorial board and we'll be growing that in the coming years. Um, and also we're very interested in soliciting suggestions for original content um, from our board, but also from the, the COSIs. And um, so, yeah, again, I really encourage you to, to get involved with the journal and, and, and submit your work to us. We'd be really delighted to um, uh, take a look at it. Okay, thank you. So I just wanna announce also on the audio that there is going to be a birds of a feather session on, uh, on Wednesday, um, whatever time you have, wherever you are in the middle of the day of the scientific day and we will be there to ask, answer your questions and to discuss with you about the journal. And we're looking forward to seeing you in this session. Thank you so very much, Alex and Thomas. Exciting for sure. And I know it's been a tremendous amount of work. So thank you for taking the lead on that. I'd now like to just turn the slides over to our ISCB nominations co-chair, Michelle Brazos, to talk a little bit about the ISCB officer election. Thanks, Diane. Um, as an ISCB member, you have the privilege to nominate and elect members of the ISCB community to hold leadership positions. The 2021 open officer positions are for vice president and treasurer. Next slide. The 21, 2021 ballot also has a position for a student council representative to sit on the board of directors. Next slide as well as the leadership election of the ISCB Student Council. Next slide. The ballot is open, and so I encourage you to cast your vote. Use your voice and take a moment to cast your vote. And finally, the ISCB would like to congratulate Bonnie, Francisco, Lakshmi, and Lucia on their recent election to the Board of Directors. 
Congratulations to all and thank you for your service to the society. I turn the slides back to you, Diane. Thank you so much, Michelle. And in my congratulations as well to our new members of the board. And that ballot will be open until Friday. So make sure you cast your vote. Without further ado, I'd now like to turn the presentation over to our student council, where they're gonna give us an update on what is happening in the student council, as well as the SCS 2021 presentation. Farzana, the floor is yours. Yes. Hi, Dan. Thanks. Uh, I will just quickly start sharing my screen and then I can start. Okay. So good morning, good afternoon and evening. Uh, I am Farzan Rahman. I'm currently in the ICP Board of Directors representing Student Council and Early Career Researchers. And this year is my uh, last year running for the and representing Student Council. As you have seen, the vote is open, so please do vote before I start my presentation. I'm just giving some uh, shout outs for the vote, uh, I mean, uh, for the nomination, nominees actually. Okay, so welcome to Student Council's report at ICP Virtual Town Hall. Since 2005, student council members are working toward building and fostering the next generation of computational biologists. In this slide, you are seeing the current elected executive team members and committee chairs of the student council. However, we are a way bigger community than you saw in the last slide via our regional student groups. So if you're part of past, present, or future SC, please add your photo to create the SC college visit the link or you can take a photo and then uh, later on scan the QR code to do that as well. Okay, now I'm moving forward to committee updates. This year, Educational Internship Committee of uh, Student Council organized SCS Wikipedia Hackathon, collaborating with ICB Wikipedia Committee, which is co-chaired by Alistair Looney Welsh and uh, myself as well. So our internship program, which is funded uh, by uh, the Anna Tramontanotti Fellowship, was paused due to COVID-19 pandemic. However, we are aiming to resume it from coming year. If you are a PI uh, and want to host an internship by the program, please do contact us and we value your support a lot. And if you are a student looking for internship, keep an eye on our website next year. Student councils, regional student groups are operating in 34 countries. They have been incredibly active organizing virtual symposium uh, and uh, hackathon workshops and other events. We have funded 18 individual events in this financial year. So this is the current RSG distribution map. We are welcoming newly formed RSGs in Pakistan, Norway, Venezuela, and Nigeria. If you don't see a RSG in your country, please do contact the RSG team to help us set, uh, set up a RSG in your region. We want to expand globally and gradually and rapidly. So the RSG Awareness Series has hosted 53 virtual events uh, and talks in last two sessions. To find out more about the webinar, uh, please email us or visit the QR code to learn more about it and also to collaborate. Our web committee led by Wim Kuypers and Spencer uh, Krieger uh, did great job maintaining SC websites, supporting SCS, uh, because we hosted three sim uh, student council symposium last year. So they have supported those three and also RSG and supporting the RSG leaders with their websites and their submission system. <laughs> so SC treasurer Bart Kuypers did an amazing job with ICB, especially with Diane, managing and maintaining the SC budget during COVID-19 pandemic and raising funds with the Student Council Symposium 2021 team to host the symposium. Uh, our SC outreach chair, Nazifa Fatima, uh, was incredible as usual, managing the social media platform and more importantly, promoting the SCS Wikipedia Hackathon which was a great success. Thanks to Nazifa for all the promotion. We had a massive number of, a um, large number of audience really. Okay, so now talking about a little bit of the future perspective. If you are in Nordic region or LA, uh, Latin American region, please get in touch with the groups to expand the bioinformatics community further. We are also working actively to revive the RSGs in North Africa. 
region. So please, uh, that's our future perspective to combine and expand the ban from BRICS committee in RSG North Africa, as well as uh, progress it further in Latin America, South America, and the Asian region. Okay. So last year, even though it was a very hard and crucial time for all of us, but our incredible team has worked hard across the globe, organizing three flagship symposiums. And you will find those meeting reports published in F1000 research. So at present, we are working to strengthen the community as well as um, expanding the internship program to help more students from developing nations. And also the RHG is working more to expand their virtual seminar cities. Okay, so here, if you, uh, we are interested to learn more about how the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted you, your research and uh, as an individual. So we have created a quick survey here. So if you can actually take a screenshot or photo of this, or maybe this, uh, uh, scan the QR code or look at I at ICBS or SS2021 uh, Twitter link, then we will actually, we want your, support and we want you to participate in the survey and as i said like we are actively looking for new members to join us so if you are interested to join any of our committee if you are a student or maybe if you are a pi and you have students who will be interested to join us please let them know to sign up okay so i will be ending my presentation by congratulating the SCS Wikipedia competition winner, hackathon winners for this year, who are Maxwell Douglas and Pradeep Iranti, Sanjana Fatima Chaudhuri, Thomas Chok, and Valentina Rorenzi. A huge congratulations to all of them. It was a great success and we really appreciated your participation and we had around um, 67 participants actually, uh, even though we managed to do everything but with the help of with help of Diane in uh, two, two weeks time. So it was a great turnaround. Thanks, Diane. So as, as Christine mentioned, um, in the society and everything, we really, we are growing and progressing. I think it's a, a great um, thanks goes to Diane and also the board of directors and for us, uh, obviously the regional student group community. Thanks. I'll um, invite now Clady to present his student culture symposium report. Uh, Clady, are, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, I'll turn up my camera and start. Okay, good morning to everyone. My name is Clady Osorio. I'm from Peru. I'm a graduate student at University of Sao Paulo. Um, I am chair of uh, S. Student Council Symposium 2021, and it is an honor to me have organized the greatest event of the Student Council. And today I'm going to present uh, the highlights of the Student Council Symposium 2021. Um, as uh, we uh, first, we presented the logo inspired by the France flag colors. France was the host country of, of the event, and I would like to present. Our, our logo. Thank you very much. Next, uh, we'd like to, pre to pre introduce our organizing team. Um, Victor Bresingren from France, he was also the chair of the ICS uh, 2021 um, with me, as chair with me. Um, I'm going to mention some chairs of each commit, Shurti Guta from India, a program commit, Gabriel Olguin from Chile, Outreach Commit, Matias Galati from France, Jose Liven Commit, uh, Sebastian Ayala from Ecuador, Fellowship uh, Commit, and Esling El Chiari from France, uh, Finance Commit, and all of them, and um, all of them, people from Peru, from um, France, from India, and from Mexico too, and two members of the IS, ISCB Student Council Executive Team, Gonzalo Parra and Bart Kuiper. Next. Uh, okay, I'm going to talk about our statistics in general and about the program. We decided to make our event in two days just to give the opportunity to people around the world to attend our symposium. In the first day, we the preference wa were, uh, was for people from Asia and Europe, about uh, according to the, the, the best award for them, and the second day for America people and Europe people, of course. And uh, uh, we have uh, three keynote speakers. Uh, I'm going to talk about this after. And we have 12 talks and presentation of 10 minutes. 
12 flash talk presentation of two minutes and 28 posters. And about the attendance with uh, post with the IMIT uh, pro uh, platform, we had 236 registrants and more than eight, uh, 80 uh, assistants uh, attendance in our platform. Next. And uh, about our activities as an, a novel feature in the history of the Student Council Symposium, we organized it with the support of Predet Eranti and Gonzalo Parra, the RSU Roundtable. It was a global leadership meeting with the presentation of Sayang, um, then presentation of six RSG uh, in re relevance, and after this, uh, time to question for attendance about, about RSG in general, and with the presence of the executive team of the student council too. And we have at the same time presentations and panel stage, uh, presentations, talks, right? And panel session in our platform because each table uh, was for each poster. And social event with amazing activities and polls, for example, about the food or the culture of France and about science and some, and then some well, games just to relax. Next. Our keynote speaker, Wolfgang Huber, uh, Dr. Wolfgang Huber, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Nicola Mulder, and Dr. Jana Brunberg. Um, after the, uh, these amazing and inspirational talks, we present as a present, a special present, uh, some designs about, well, it was just, just uh, like a summary of their presentations. This, pictures were designed while the speakers were presenting. And it was very incredible for them. And thank you very much, Tessa Ricard from Peru for, uh, for these this, for this pictures. Next. Okay, thank you very much to the ISCB and the ISCB Student Council. And ISCB, thank you very much for the poster hall, for the website, for give us the list of our, of the, our attendance. Thank you very much, Stephen Leard. Edmund Hollard, excuse me for my assignment, and Diane Kovas for your help and recommendation. And thank you very much, ISCB Student Council, Aishwarya Nazef and Varsana, Gonzalo Parra, thank you, Gonzalo Parra, thank you very much, and Barry Kuiper for your advice, for your suggestion in the organization of our event. Next. Okay, uh, about fellowship, uh, we give some uh, speaker and attendance fellowships. And um, we give 50 Cabana fellowships for Latin American students. Thank you very much, Cabana. And 27 Cabana American School fellowship for the student worldwide. Uh, our review process uh, was inspired in the, in the guidelines of Cabana. Uh, thank you very much, Cabana. And thank you very much, Harvard Medical Symposium uh, for your platinum sponsorship. Next. Um, uh, the prices for our winners uh, uh, is, is they are sponsored. Uh, these are sponsored by Harvard Medical School for the talks. Winner of talks next, flush talks, and poster. Thank you very much, Harvard Medical School and Cabana. Thank you very much for supporting Latin American students and congratulations to all of them. Okay, I would like to present these two pictures because these demonstrate our happiness working together after hard months of meetings, uh, emails, and um, talking in English. No, we are not no native uh, speaker uh, talking English, but it was a, the opportunity for all of them. Um, in, person, um, in my case, thank you very much because really it, um, it was, of course, an opportunity to me uh, organize this really and um, incredible event. Thank you so much for the opportunity supporting me and give me advice. And um, I feel that I have improved my professional and leadership skill. But I'd like to say that more than an opportunity for a Peruvian or Latin American student, in my case, it is the opportunity where I can inspire other students to involve on the ISCB and the ISCB Student Council in general, improve and organize events and in the informatics and computational biology in my country, Peru. And I wish also improvements for each country in the world. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Clady. You have done an amazing job and the energy 
and passion in our student council just speaks for itself. We're so, so proud to have you. And I've received many accolades today, which I cannot take on my own. I have an amazing team behind me that works very hard every day for ISCB, along with a wonderful supportive board of directors who are really working for you, our members. Unfortunately, we ran out of time today. I'll make sure I'll add 15 minutes in next year. But if you do have any comments, questions, or suggestions for the leadership, please feel free to quickly drop them in the chat or I'll open a Cafe Connect table during the scientific research forum and you can stop by and chat with me. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you enjoy day two of ISMB and I'll, I'll get you off to your next sessions now. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.